Big loss. That was a nice little seggy there. I know. Did you see what happened? <laughs> uh, the Bucks with Dame Lillard leading the way, 141-29. They didn't even have Giannis in this one, but he did have 31 points, a career high, tying 16 assists. That's his first big game like this uh, since joining the Bucks and in Bucks history. Uh, Bobby Portis, 31 and 10. They hit 24 of 41 threes. And Kevin Durant, weird night, uh, 11 points, nine rebounds. But let's concentrate on Dame Lillard for a second here. 30 points and 15 assists. That was his first game of, of those numbers, at least, since joining Milwaukee. How do we make that happen more often? I think it comes with time. You know, even Dame said, you know, he came into the Milwaukee situation not trying to step on toes and kind of trying to find his rhythm and, and place with, with that group. He just ha he has to be the lead guy. You know, I think out of him, Middleton, and Giannis, he's going to be the guy that you put the ball in that can absolutely go get you a bucket and, and can score. So with that being said, why not play through Dame? Why not give him the basketball and allow him to be himself and everybody else figures it out? Giannis, to me, has always been the type of player where he can put his head down in the, in the open floor. Nobody can stop him. But now that they've started playing that two-man game together where he's a picker, he's a roller, he's giving them different looks, that makes them dangerous. And now Middleton back for his first game mm. and they have 22. We talked about all his chemistry. That's not a Chris Middleton problem. Chris has come in and that first game back, it, it looks seamless to me. Yeah, and, and Giannis, is their, I think Giannis is their best player, right? But that doesn't mean you have to play through him. I think they play through Damian Lillard, and that opens up the entire floor for Giannis to even be better offensively. Because when you surround him, who, like Lou said, with his head down, he attacks, he gets out in transition, that opens up the floor so much and allows these other – because you have to help when guarding Giannis. No one's going to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, especially in, transi in transition. So when you have a team like this who had 18 threes in the first half <laughs> last night – they should only get better with Giannis, but I think they have to play through Damian Lillard, continue to let him do what he does, and that's going to open up the floor and make Giannis' game even easier. Um, Lou talked about Chris Middleton with the 22 points. Look, he missed 16 games and then just jumped back out there like nothing had happened. And that's not easy. That it can't be easy, but title chances... How, where is he in, in the importance? Well, he's the key. He was huge in their title run before, and he's huge now. And obviously, they add Damian Laird. And I think Chris Middleton and Bobby Portis are so important to this team. Every time someone's gone out, Bobby Portis has stepped up and had a great game. Chris Middleton, he's been in and out. He's been on a minute restriction. He this, this, this game last night, this was the first time I've seen him almost just healthy and fresh and getting to his spots and looking like he did a couple years ago. So it's a great luxury to have because this is another guy. This He was their closer when they won mm -hmm. that championship. The ball was in his hands he was the one to go get a bucket um and now so you see him kind of get back to his old ways doing things like this hitting step backs posting up smaller guys it's just another dynamic that they have when they when they have Giannis going downhill they have Dame stretching the floor in defense now you have this guy who can kind of do a little bit of everything it, it's huge I I was looking down and that this topic just took me to a dark place whoa, oh boy whoa whoa game seven I was on Atlanta Hawks, and we had an opportunity to beat the Bucks. And Giannis was out. Uh-oh. And Chris Middleton <laughs> put that team <laughs> on his back. It had a 20-point fourth quarter and sent us to Cabo. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, how important, how important is this guy? Like, he literally said, Giannis, no problem. I can go beat these guys by myself. And we had a joke. It was like he turned into Kobe Bryant out of the blue. Like he just, he, he woke up Chris Middleton and went to sleep Kobe Bryant. And, and that's what he did. That, and that's the look that he's going to give this group. You know, if Dame doesn't have it, if Giannis doesn't have it, you have a guy that can go out and get 30 or go get 20 points fresh out of bed and hadn't played in 16 games. That's what Chris Middleton is going to give to Milwaukee Bucks. I still like Boston, but if there's going to be a team that's going to challenge him for that title coming out of the East, it's going to be the Milwaukee Bucks, it's, and Chris Middleton is going to be important. It's that. true. We've talked all year long, Boston, Boston, Boston. It's not going to be an easy series against the Milwaukee Bucks. This team is complete. This team can shoot. This team is defending better, which you got to give credit to Doc Rivers. Uh, but this team is deep. They have a lot of shooters. Malik Beasley, they have a lot of ways they can hurt you, but... With, with Chris Middleton playing the way he did last night, if he can have those efficient nights and go get buckets, it's it's going to be a dogfight when they play Boston. He's the, he's the X factor. And I will say, we got to give Doc Rivers credit. I think I... Chandler spoke about it before. The ball being in Damon Lillard's hands, that was Doc Rivers saying it and making sure that they preached it and they practiced it. I think Adrian Griffin just for whatever reason, could not get that across to the team, could not get that across to the Giannis and, and to the Kumpo and Damian Lillard as far as the, yes, Giannis is in group. I think everyone can say he's one of the best players in the league, probably the best player on this team, of course, but Damian Lillard, when the ball's in his hands, when he can be the closer, when he can be the lead ball handler, that's where this team 
thrives and is successful. All right, so with the Giannis thing and the hamstring, is that a big deal? My sense is, listen, he's been, he, the fact that he was at least able to warm up or, or try to play, you know, you just want to make sure, especially this late in the season, that he's 100%, especially with a hamstring. Yep. Um, so I expect he's going to continue to test it out every single time. And day. the hamstring is something that you don't want to mess with because right. it can linger and it can get worse. But Doc said last night, this isn't an injury. They're just taking this time. Well, we saw, what was it, uh, last week or the week before, like he warmed up. That's true. And then he, he had the issue. And he made a weird movement. And then, and then yeah. they just sat yeah. him. And then he played the next game. So this late in the season with a player that good, with the stakes this high, as far as like Chandler said, like it's really, like let's, be, let's, let's call it, like it's Milwaukee and Boston That's right it. now. Like, How dare you? That is can New York, I'm not calling it. No. Can Cleveland, I mean, Cleveland no. has something team, to say about it. But not calling can it. Can a no. team do an upset? But I think going in, you have yep. to look at them too as the favorite. They can't. How dare you in the month of March say an upset they can't, can't occur? And by the way, with the production <laughs> that they're getting from Chris Middleton and Bobby Portis, this is just giving them even more confidence to not rush Giannis back because they know they can still win games against teams like Phoenix. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying, I'm saying that they're the favorites. Happen. Somebody's going but to upset in, somebody. And, but in March, no. with that said, in March, teams start to separate themselves. You're starting to see who's dead serious about trying to win a title and who's trying to stay above water. Barring a bad, bad injury from one of these guys, it is going to be Milwaukee, Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. So is or the they field might meet up in the. Could they meet up in the? No, they can't. Well, hold on. So are you um, offering a bet where we get to take the field in this thing? In I East? would like to take that. Yes, I'll take those two. I would you like get to take anybody that. else. Okay, thank you. What's what no are we problem. betting? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. How about you pay me ten grand? I pay you a hundred bucks. <laughs> Oof. I like it. All right. What are uh, those odds? <laughs> those are bad, bad You're odds. You're like, wait, hold on. How did that math work yeah. out? I don't know. And somehow I still want to take it. <laughs> 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 there you go. If you feel confident. Um, a friend of the show, Isaiah Thomas. This was a fun tweet yeah. we had, Shams. I got very happy when I saw this one. So he's got a gig. Isaiah Thomas, 10-day contract with Woo! the Phoenix Suns. 183. We know the numbers now. That's a nice week. That's a nice 10 days. Is that, is that the number? $183,000 yep. yes, he will make on this 10-day contract. The plan is for him to sign Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, it's a 10-day contract, but that roster spot is going to be his, barring anything happening. I mean, he averaged 33 points and 45% three-point shooting Eesh. in the G League. All four games, he had 30 points or more. You think about shooting, playoff experience. He's been a part of title chases in Boston. The yeah. veteran leadership, even if he doesn't play, I think that's a guy you can look at in the locker room as well. I got a, a great text statement from Danny Ainge over the weekend. Obviously, their relationship, when Isaiah Thomas got traded from Boston, we know there was, there was a little bit of a grudge held there. There was a little bit of a cold stint in that relationship. Then Danny Ainge brings Isaiah Thomas back to the Utah Jazz organization. He plays for the Salt Lake City Stars that leads to this uh, call-up now. Danny Ainge told me, he's special, as driven as anyone I know. He made a difference to everyone he was around in 10 short days in the G League. I couldn't be happier for him. Good pickup by the Suns. So, mm -hmm. A lot of things accomplished for Isaiah Thomas. That relationship with Danny Ainge being patched up is one of them. Yeah, deserve it. Yeah, and anybody that knows IT knows he's the greatest guy. He's not going to come in there. He's going to be zero distraction. And, and last week, we could just see he's not giving up. He's going to no. continue to try. And not to do my own homer show, but I did call Phoenix Suns because it makes sense. They have no point guard. This kid is – and by the way, forget him being a great guy because he is. He was killing. What did you say his numbers were? 34 and 44%? Like his first game, right? 30, 33 points a game. Yeah. yeah, like the guy, he deserves it. He went, he did his stint, and now he, and I hope he gets an opportunity here in this 10 day stretch because the Phoenix Suns, by the way, need a point guard to set up that offense. And it can be a guy that's more deserving of the opportunity. You know, when you talk about veterans and, and how hard it is to get back in the league, get back on a team, for three years, IT has been consistently talking, tweeting manifesting his way back into the NBA. So the Charlotte stint was a great one for him. Now he has an opportunity with Phoenix to compete for a championship yep. if they can get it together. I don't know if they needed another scoring punch, but if you're going to add a scoring punch, Isaiah Thomas is one of the guys to go and get. I'm extremely happy for my friend. Um, I shot him a text when, it, when he got picked up. This is great for him, great for his family, great for his career. This was a good <laughs> one. Um, but the Suns thing is weird because, you know, you heard the KD numbers. This is a loss to a Bucks team with no Giannis, Lou. At this point in the season, March, uh, how concerning is that? 
you know, the game, that game isn't, con- <laughs> well, that game isn't concerning to me because they lost to a better team, you know? I, yeah, but no Giannis, like how? Yeah, but I, listen, a, a Dame Lillard and a Chris Middleton have beat a lot of teams by themselves. Yeah, Bobby Portis playing yeah, the bottom. Yeah, listen, that, well, that, that team, well. that team is, they're turning into a wet oil machine. That team without Giannis can beat a lot of teams. So it's not really concerning to me. Like I said, them not really limping into the postseason, but we just hadn't seen, the, it's, it's flash without the fire right now. And... <laughs> At any moment, they can turn into the one of the worst nightmares in the Western Conference. I just hadn't felt it. I hadn't seen it. And you know, I'm a groove guy. I'm a vibe guy. And I hadn't felt I hadn't felt the vibe. So I don't really I don't really take that game to be too much. But you know, they got to figure it out very soon. The concerning thing to me is how in the hell does Kevin Durant play 41 minutes and take 10 shots? I don't know. Like that that's unacceptable. And he's got to know that he's got to be more aggressive. I don't care if they're bad shots. You're Kevin Durant. You have to be aggressive. You have to set the tone. And you're the best player on this team. You've been the best player everywhere you went, whether it was the Warriors, the Thunder, the Nets, everywhere you went, you've been the guy. So don't ever play 41 minutes again and take 10 shots. That's ridiculous. It was an odd KD night. Um, 